We are live now. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Anna Scott, and I'm the International Recruitment Officer for Southeast Asia, so covering Thailand. And I'm joined today by Dr. Eugene Michaels, who's a lecturer in economics um, here at the University of Derby. What we're going to do today is tell you all about the University of Derby and why we think that you should make the university your first choice when studying in the UK, and then go into a little bit of details about studying postgraduate business at the university. So um, here are some of the ways that you can contact us. Um, you can ask questions during this session and um, afterwards, if you have any more questions that we've not answered, you can go on our website, you can follow us on social media, you can email me or WhatsApp me and I'm also online. So there's plenty of ways there for you to get um, involved and chat to us and ask any questions. So first off, Derby has a real uh, strength in teaching and learning, which is reflected in our achievements. So we're really proud to be rated gold in the um, teaching excellence framework. And we've also been rated in the top 30 of the Guardian University Guide 2020. In the past 10 years, we've invested around 200 million pounds in our study, sport, recreation and wellness facilities. And that's to provide the best experience we can for our students. Derby is one of the most affordable cities in the UK and we've also been awarded the purple flag which recognises the um, entertaining and diverse nature of our city but also um, gives us that uh, recognition of safety. We've got lots of parks and beautiful green spaces in Derby and we're actually located on the um, edge of the Peak District National Park um, so you can get the best of city life and country life at the same time. Um, in 2019, we welcomed more than 1,700 students from over 100 countries around the world uh, to study with us. Um, so it just shows the kind of diverse and multicultural city that we live in. We're really proud that we were rated as the number one international student centre in the UK. And we were also recognised as being number one in the UK for formally welcoming international students and for our multicultural learning and for our faith provision. So we give lots of um, support to our international students from before you arrive at the university and throughout your studies. One of the first things we do is arrange to pick you up from the airport um, and meet and greet you. And then we take you through your halls and arrange a welcome week specifically for international students to help you to begin to settle into the UK and to help you to begin to make friends. So I always get asked, where is Derby? Um, Derby's in the heart of the United Kingdom. So it's, like I said, it's both city life and country life. We're about 90 minutes away from London on the train and Manchester by car. Um, so we're ideally situated to visit the rest of the UK. You can see there on the screen some flight times from Bangkok. Um, so you usually would come uh, with one stop um, and that type takes kind of about 18, about 18 hours, depending on where, which airport you're coming in from. The region is also really great for business. So there's been about three billion pounds invested in the city over the past 10 years. And we're actually ranked second in the UK for uh, the best place to make a living. And we have companies such as Rolls-Royce, Toyota and Bombardier in the region and in the city. Across all our campuses and courses, you'll find lecturers who still practice in the field. Um, many of them are active researchers and our re uh, reputation for research is actually growing. So as a student at Derby, you'll benefit from research informed teaching. Um, and you'll also benefit because many of our academics are still working in industry. So they know the latest industry trends and they know exactly what employers are looking for and can support you throughout your learning um, with that industry experience. Our campus is a short walk um, from the city centre and we've actually got a number of sites across the city. So we're more of a city-based um, campus than a campus campus, um, but everything's quite close together and there's a free university bus that takes you between all of our buildings. Um, th the quality of our facilities ensures that you are experiencing the technology um, and environments that are on par with the industry um, standard. So you get that real um, world learning experience. 
So some of the facilities are sh shown here on the screen, um, but just as some of the examples, uh, we have a forensic crime scene house, we have a replica courtroom. We also have the Bloomberg Financial Markets Lab, um, and this is dedicated information and analytics, um, which is dedicated to trading room, which provides a stimulation, um, which is like being on a real trading floor. And I'm sure Eugene will tell you a little bit more about that when he, he talks a bit more in detail about the courses. We've also got um, a sports center with a gym and a climbing wall and all of the facilities um, for strength training. And we've got a brand new STEM center, which we invested 12.5 million pounds in, and that's our science, technology and engineering. Our facilities are provided to improve your employment and our students' employment possibilities. Um, and we work closely with students throughout their time at Derby to give them tailored support for CVs and we hold employer events, career seminars, and the employment team will support you for up to three years after you graduate. So they can support you once you graduated um, to find a job. And this is why we think that 96% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months of finishing their course. Here you can see some of the strong industry links uh, that we have with employers around the region and across the country. And as a result of these partnerships, the university has a reputation for industry relevant degree programs. And we've um, offered over 20,000 students the opportunities to gain professional work experience alongside their studies. We have a range of levels of study from foundation programs to undergraduate, postgraduate and then postgraduate research programs. Um, and these on the screen here are some of our subject areas. So our subject areas include art and design, business, law and social sciences, engineering and technology, health, psychology and social care, human and environmental sciences and hospitality and tourism. So uh, Eugene is now going to tell you a little bit more about the business school and the courses that we offer there, specifically for postgraduate study here at the University of Derby. Right, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Eugene Michaels. I'm the program leader for the MSc International Business and also one of the senior lecturers in economics at the Derby Business School. Uh, so for the next few minutes or so, I will give you an overview of our programs in international business and then hand over back to Anna. Uh, if you have questions, just like Anna said, please put the questions in the, in the uh, group chat. So at the University of Derby, we have four uh, international business postgraduate programs. You have international business, you have MSc International Business and Finance, MSc International Business and Marketing, and MSc International Business and Human Resource Management. Um, they, these programs normally take 12 months to complete. So you would do uh, you, the, your studies from September 2020 to September 2021, or uh, you would start in January. We also have a January start, so you can study from January 2021 to January 2022. But we also have an extended version of these programs that takes 18 months to complete that starts in January. So, for example, for you would start in January 2021, and finish in August 2022. The difference between the normal one year version and the extended version is uh, that you would do your dissertation uh, later on. So in the normal version, the 12 months um, program, you would do your dissertation from the very beginning. In the extended version, you start your dissertation module in a semester later. So you would only start your, your dissertation in September. I will talk more about this when we look at the program structures. And so in the coming slides, you will see that um, in order 
to better equip our students in dealing with the complexity of global business, we have developed our programs using a multidisciplinary approach. And a particular strength of our programs is the fact that we explicitly include law as part of our mix of subjects. So not only will you understand the economics, the finance, the management uh, of international business, but you will also understand how legal factors can affect international business strategy. And you will also develop interdisciplinary skills. Uh, in our view, a masterly understanding of international business has to include international law um, on trade and arbitration, on financial um, transactions, on intellectual property, if you're in marketing, or, or employment, if you're in human resources management, depending on your choice. Uh, and one thing that I will uh, keep referring to is that in your studies, you will always be using real world analysis on real companies using real time data. Um, so let's take each program in turn and, and you will understand a bit more about the, the structure um, and you'll get a, a feel for, oh, I don't know why it's doing this. Right. So on, uh, on international business, on the MSc International Business, this is the most balanced of our programs in an interdisciplinary sense of, uh, of the word. It gives you the most flexibility in your pursuit of a global career uh, business that you, you, you seek. Your, our graduates have gone on to work for multinational companies in a variety of positions. So I have graduates from in marketing management uh, to customer services and purchasing to business and finance analysis and to consultancy. Uh, it, it is really a very um, flexible degree. Now on the MSc International Business, you will study four core modules that you see on the list here, listed in bold. So international economics, market analysis, international business theory, national international sale of goods. These are the four core modules. And you will also take two optional modules from the list in normal font below. So strategic and financial performance management, human resources in international context, customer behavior, mergers and acquisitions, and international finance. In each semester, you will do two core modules and one option. Um, and alongside these, you will also do your dissertation module. Yeah, the, you will be able to develop real world research skills by taking the independent studies module. So you can choose a topic uh, that you can research in depth and develop expertise in a particular um, aspect of international business, be it a, a particular market or a particular operation or even a particular company. You will have guidance along the way. So this is what I mentioned earlier. It, on the 12 month version of the program, you would do your three modules each semester with the independent studies alongside from the very beginning. On the, on the extended version of the programs, you would start the independent studies a semester later. Now, if you are considering a career in finance within a, a global business, uh, I, then you should consider MSc International Business and, uh, and Finance, where you will study the core modules in international business, but also uh, finance and finance law. So you can you see you will still do international economics, international business theory and strategy, but you will focus uh, on finance by doing strategic finance and international banking and finance law. And of course, you can do even more finance by tailoring the options that you select uh, to be financial as well. So strategic financial performance, international finance, depending on on your, your flavor, 
exactly your choice of specialization. Alternatively, you may choose to, you know, uh, pick a, a broader selection of options. So you may choose HRM, or maybe you want to learn a bit more about marketing while still doing most of your studies within international business and finance. Um, if you're interested in marketing, then you should look at the MSc International Business and Marketing. So this is where the focus is on international business, but also you will do marketing core modules and the law module this time will be intellectual property in the digital age. Uh, and of course you have a choice to broaden your knowledge in the areas of international finance and strategy. But you can see how this is a much more constrained um, program overall. So you're more hemmed in in terms of your choices. We are stipulating a bit more of the marketing uh, modules that you need to, uh, to take. And uh, lastly, we have the MSc International Business and Human Resource Management. This is for those of you who are considering a career in human resources uh, within a multinational. Now, you're gonna study the, the same international business modules as before, international economics, international business theory and strategy, but this time you will also take uh, human resource modules that are slightly different in the sense that they will be giving you professional accreditation with our Chartered Institute for Personal, for, sorry, Chartered Institute for Professional Development, CIPD uh, in the UK. So the modules that you see that are human resource management focused, those are gonna give you exemptions on the CIPD. So leading and managing development people, employment law, uh, strategic development, talent development. So normal, most students will study the modules listed here in bold. Uh, however, if you have a human resource uh, background, so if you've done your undergraduate studies in human resource management, then you have a limited choice. You'll be able to pick uh, some of the, those, those modules listed at the bottom, human resources in international context, and strategic and financial performance management. And you can take those instead of two from the ones above. Now, on our programs, I mean, we always emphasize that it's not just about the knowledge that you will gain day to day in the modules. Um, a lot of emphasis is put on how you develop yourself outside the classroom. So first of all, you can enhance your CV. Yes, you will have your uh, certificate, you know, your degree certificate for the, for the masters, but you can enhance your CV further by gaining additional qualifications. You could, for example, work towards our Futures Award in Leadership in International Business. This is a separate uh, special award from the University of Derby that recognizes your engagement with extracurricular activities that strengthen your professional development, such as, so activities such as uh, gaining the Bloomberg Markets Concept Certificate. This is your driver's license for the Bloomberg Terminal. I will mention this um, in the next slides or so. Uh, or you can do, um, you can participate in university competitions, you engage in networking events, uh, and you build leadership skills. So all these activities, your engagement in, in these sort of activities will be recognized uh, as part of this um, non-credit bearing University of Derby Award. Um, further, in doing the, the programs, you'll be able to demonstrate expertise and research skills. This is where your independent study module, your dissertation comes in. It is not just that it's a very big assignment, it's worth a third of your degree, but it is really your chance to showcase your skills uh, and research interests in a particular area. So yes, you will be an international business master's graduate, but you will really know about 
XYZ, you know, an international business operation, a particular market or a particular company. Um, so this is about your chance to explore a detail of international business. Uh, our MSc programs will help you develop critical skills, including analytical capabilities, cross-cultural communication skills, and networking skills. And on our MSc programs, you will have a very international study experience. 90% of the programs on these, or sorry, 90% of the students on our programs are international. They come from all over the world. And you will be able to network, interact, learn from these students. And you will, this will be your first immersive networking experience. And now, Anna mentioned this earlier, one of our jewels in the business school is our Bloomberg Market Financial uh, Lab. This is one of the most important facilities we have for our postgraduate students. Um, the Bloomberg uh, Lab is housing the, the Bloomberg terminals and Bloomberg is one of the major data service providers. You may be familiar with it in the in a trading context, so investing in trading, you know that sort of thing. When you think about uh, stock markets and buying and selling shares, but it's so much more than that. It is the major source for used by global companies to gain real time data on companies, competitors, markets, supply chains, uh, economic and financial data. And even, you know, current news, just regular analysis and briefings on the current events. So in the next couple of slides here, I'll give you an, um, a glimpse into the sort of analysis you will undertake while on our programs, um, making use of the Bloomberg services. So obviously the focus of the day is on the pandemic. And you can see, I mean, all these screens uh, taken from the Bloomberg terminal. And on the left, I mean, I don't need to tell you that worldwide cases of the COVID-19 are rising and you can see the breakdown um, by some areas that I've selected. You can see how the pandemic is spreading. And on the right-hand side, you can see the VIX index. This is the index of fear, <laughs> as it's called. It basically shows you the um, uh, the volatility in the in the global markets. It shows you how March was a real turning point and how ever since then we got more used to the pandemic, but we're nowhere near the calm waters in which we've been before February 2020. So what has been the impact of the, um, of the, the virus on the global markets, well, we can take them in turn. So in terms of global commodities, you can see here, um, energy, metals, agriculture, you can see how the prices are all down. So the pandemic has affected global supply and it has affected global demand. The lockdown has meant Economic activity came to, came to a standstill, you know, world over. And of course, this is reflected in the fact that we don't consume, uh, you know, energy as much as we used to. We don't use metals to build things. We don't uh, buy cattle and corn and soybean like we used to. So global commodities, you can see the highlighted year-to-date year change, and it's still down. Uh, by a large amount, 20 to 30 percent um, year on year. This, in terms of global equities, so obviously that um, shock to the, to the supply system and to the demand system worldwide has translated in um, a reaction in the stock markets. The loss of economic activity has meant loss of revenue for companies. So the immediate reaction has been to 
sell um, stocks. And you can see how various markets in the US, in the UK, China, Thailand have all reacted. You can see the main indices, yeah, the stock market indices, they all fell by 30% at least um, at the height of the pandemic crisis. So we're looking at March. Since then, we've had a partial recovery, but many analysts are saying that this is still um, unwarranted uh, given the, um, the, the seriousness of the pandemic situation. So global equities, obviously you can see they're down, um, although some stocks have done better than others. And we will look at the, an example in, in the coming slides. What about global bonds? So where did all the money go? If people are selling the stocks, if people are not buying um, you know, goods like they used to, where are they retreating with their investments? And the answer is they're looking for safe haven assets. On the global commodities, one of the uh, highlights, one of the green spots was gold. So people have been piling into gold, investors, I should say, piling into gold. And also they have been buying government bonds, sovereign, um, sovereign debt. And you can see how the yields as a result of this have been falling and falling and falling. So interest rates have been slashed and it's this investor activity that has been driving the bond yields to you know, record lows effectively. And you can see the yield there highlight, that I highlighted. These are, for some countries, those yields have actually turned negative. Um, and you can also see on the right-hand side in the data range, how far below the normal, you know, the post great financial crisis normal, how, how below the, the normal they are. So this is basically, again, showing you the impact of investor fear, you know, looking for safe haven assets. It's, and trying to, to, to save your, your assets. So what has been the response? Well, um, there has been fiscal stimulus response. The governments have tried to prop up the economy. They have, you know, they've given out handouts to, uh, to people they have supported uh, payrolls, but also the initial responses have been on the monetary side. They have cut interest rates and they have uh, pursued quantitative easing. So you can see at the top there, this is the, um, the central bank's balance sheets. They have kept increasing and increasing and increasing with all this extended um, quantitative easing activity. And they have to do the quantitative easing because interest rates are already almost at the zero lower bound level. And as I was saying earlier, it's not all bad news. Yes, the overall, the stock markets have fallen, but actually some companies have done much worse than others. Uh, and indeed, in the last uh, couple of weeks, the tech stocks have been doing quite well, actually. So I'm showing you here the screens for two companies, Boeing and Netflix, and you can see how Boeing has been particularly affected by the pandemic. I mean, we know that there are no planes going anywhere, not yet. Um, although, yes, some, some uh, services have, been, have started slowly to be restored, but still the outlook for the travel and tourism industry and for the, um, for the plane industry, for the aeronautics is not looking great. As a result, you can see how the share price for Boeing has fallen and has stayed um, below the, um, the Standard & Poor's index. So you can see how the performance for, the, for Boeing has been much, much worse than say uh, for Netflix. Netflix is one of the companies that have been, has been doing well. So you can see the impact uh, of the pandemic on the, um, on the share prices, but you can also then obviously dig in. So 
we can have a look exactly at what investors think, what is the financial position of these of these companies. And you can see, again, what I said earlier, because the outlook for Boeing isn't great. You can see how um, net income is expected to be low and actually negative for the current year. Uh, whereas, look at the shape, the pattern for the income for Netflix. So this is financial analysis. Obviously, you can go much, much deeper into uh, the financial analysis using the Bloomberg. You can see all the, the tabs in there. Um, and speaking of further analysis, you can also see the supply chain. So you look at the company and you can see you know, the uh, share price, what it's been doing. You can have a look at the accounts, but then you can also start digging in into the company supply chain. You can see how, yes, the company Boeing has been affected, but this means that if they're not, uh, if they're losing money, if they're not, don't have uh, demand for their products, then this affects their supply chain as well. So all these companies on the left-hand side, all of these are going to be affected by the loss of business to Boeing. And also, who is losing the business? Well, you can see the main customers on the right-hand side. You have the list of the main buyers of, um, of the planes. So obviously, it's they who will be responsible for, for Boeing's um, you know, dire straits. And also, in Bloomberg, you can analyze all of them. You can look at the um, suppliers, you can look at the customers, and you can also look at the competitors. So you can see who is the competitor to Boeing. And obviously you know that there are only you know, two main companies uh, for planes. You have Boeing and Airbus, and then some smaller companies there as well. So you can actually, Bloomberg gives you the opportunity to, to, to dig in, explore these companies, the company, you know, the filings for all of them, um, and do research effectively. And the last thing is, um, I'm not gonna, I can, I can talk more and more about this, this stuff as you can imagine, but in Bloomberg, you can get a lot of economic and financial data, even things like say uh, maps, you can get visual representations of things like international trade. So you could look at exports, imports, the deficits, relationship between countries um, and, this is just a, a, an example of the kind of analysis that you can get um, very simply in, uh, on World Trade, for example. Now, as you can imagine, I just scratched the surface on the Bloomberg terminal. Um, there's a lot in terms of analytical capability here. And Bloomberg is just one of the data services that you'll have access to while on our programs. I mean, we also have Reuters data stream, we also have Fame, Mintel, and many others. So you'll be able to do a lot more research. You know, you'll have your, the world at your fingertips. And with this, I will hand over now to, to Anna. Thanks, Eugene. That was really useful, really interesting. Um, so now we've told you a little bit about all of the courses that you could apply for. We're just going to um, give you a little bit of information about the entry requirements and how you would apply. Um, so each of our courses has individual entry requirements. So the best place to check is on the website. Um, but for some of those postgraduate courses, what we would ask for is the minimum equivalent of either a 2-2 or a 2-1. So if you're thinking about um, a university degree from Thailand, that would be either a GPA of 3.0 or 2.5. Um, if you are coming into some of our undergraduate programs, so you want to look at uh, the range of programs we have at undergraduate level, um, you, if you are coming directly from um, the national school in Thailand, you would need to complete an international foundation year, which we do have. We have an international foundation year that combines different modules with English language um, 
and an English language qualification as well. So you can complete that and then come on to a range of our undergraduate programs, including our undergraduate business programs. If you do have an advanced diploma, you can um, sometimes be considered for entry onto the second year of our bachelor programs. And we also accept credit transfer. So we do have partnerships across the region and within Thailand where you could complete the first two years of your degree in Thailand and then come in, into the second year and um, do second and third year in the UK. So you get in a combination, um, you're coming onto a programme in the UK and getting all of that experience, but you're also studying the first two years in Thailand. For our most, of, most of our master's programmes, you will need an IELTS of 6.5. Um, so in terms of English language, um, undergraduate programmes, you will need a 6.0, postgraduate 6.5. We do accept a range of English language qualifications and with the current climate um, across the world being that many IELTS testing centres have been closed, we do now at the moment accept the TOEFL online and the IELTS indicator, um, which can be completed at home. And we also accept the Derby English language test. So this is our own test that's been developed. It looks at all four areas and it's done in two parts and you will um, complete your reading and writing online, and then you will get an appointment for your speaking and listening. And once you've completed that, you will get your equivalent um, English language score within five days. So that's something that at the moment, because we know people are struggling to complete their English language um, tests, that's something that we do accept. So there's more information about that on our website. Um, and if you do want to complete one of our English language tests, you can just contact us and we can support you to book that. So Eugene talked about the extended master's um, route, which is for January entry. So if you're thinking of going to study in January 2021, we have the 18 month programmes, um, which gives you the opportunity to engage in work experience or travel during that six months period um, throughout your summer break. And so for all of the courses on the screen there, that's an option. Um, we don't have that option for some September intake at the moment. So the September entry point is just for the 12 month programs. So if you did want to make an application, you can apply directly online through our course web pages. You would just go to the course that you're interested in, click apply now an international student and it will take you through to our portal. We have many in-country agents, such as SIUK, who can support you with your application. So um, you can go on our website to see a list of those and obviously get in, in touch with SIUK. Um, we do have just two intakes, so September and January. So um, once January 2021 is finished, we'll be looking to September 21. These are some of the application documents that you will need. Um, and once you have submitted an application, we look to get back to you within three days to let you know whether you have been successful. It might be that you've been made a conditional offer on English language or something. Um, and then once you've completed all of your application and received an unconditional offer, we will require you to pay a £3,000 deposit in order to get your visa. Um, so this is only refundable if your visa is refused, but all of the terms and conditions for how to apply and for applying for your visa is is on our website so you can get lots of information there. These are the current fees for our 2020-2021 um, year so these will be the fees in January but the fees can differ depending on the course that you are looking at so the best place to go again is onto that course page onto the website and the, the current course fees will be there. There are um, sometimes some increases, so by September 2021, this could have increased, but it doesn't go up by a, by a lot usually. One of the great things that we have got at the moment for our postgraduate study um, is that there's a £2,000 um, scholarship for all students studying a postgraduate tour programme. And this is automatic. You don't need to apply for it. It will just be automatically deducted from your course fee. We do also have other scholarships available so we have some three thousand some five thousand pound and we do have some fully funded scholarships so again if you go onto the website um, you can go to derby.ac.uk forward slash southeast asia and there's a list there of our specific um, scholarships for students in that region 
In terms of once you've made your application, what you, once you've decided to come to the university, just a little bit about um, the student life here at Derby. So we have nine halls in Derby um, across um, different sites scattered within the university buildings. So they're never more than five to 20 minutes walk from campus. But again, what's, uh, what I said earlier was there's the free university bus that goes throughout the day um, if you want to travel between our buildings. Most of our first year students do live in halls for their, um, for their first year. Some of them come back second and third year as well. So it just shows that we're doing something right with our halls. But it's a really good way of helping you settle into the UK um, and make friends. So you will be in a flat of around six people. You will have a shared kitchen. You will have shared social spaces. And then you'll either have a shared bathroom or an ensuite, depending on which halls you go for. And there's also lots of activities organised by the halls. So it's a really good way of getting out and about and making friends. And all of your bills are included, so there's less pressure on that. If you did want to live in private accommodation, we have lots of opportunity in Derby to do that as well. Um, all we'll say is we have an approved landlord scheme. So if you go onto the accommodation part of our website and you look for private accommodation through the approved landlord scheme, it just shows that we've um, we've kind of checked the landlords and you know that the, uh, the, the accommodation is fit for purpose and safe and, and secure. Again, in terms of University of Life, we have at Derby more than 60 societies from cultural to music to sport. So there's actually over 40 sports teams. Some of the ways you can get involved in student life are there on the screen, but there's many, many more. You could even decide if you wanted to, to set up your own society. And we also have um, what's called Derby Worldwide, which is uh, our international society. And we often hold events where students can get together and show off their culture, bring different things from their home country and again it's just a really good way of making friends and getting involved in student life. Okay so that's all we're um, going to talk about today. Again here are the contact details if you want to get in touch with it, if you want to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram or WeChat um, and we also have live events going on at the moment so we have a postgraduate live event next week so if you go to our website, it's on the home page. You can log on to um, many different talks from international to accommodation to business engineering. There's a wide range of talks that will give you lots of information about studying in the UK. So that's next week. Last week, we held our undergraduate um, live events, but we will be post posting those videos out on the website soon. So again, if you're looking at undergraduate, study you can um, take a look at those and, and see what it's like to be a student at Derby so if you've got any questions um, let us know um, and thank you for listening thank you Anna and Eugene this is really interesting presentation um, so we're going to start answering questions now and I would like to uh, just encourage everyone to post any questions uh, presentation will be available on YouTube, so if anyone joined at the later stage, uh, you can uh, view the whole presentation uh, on YouTube channel. Um, also, if there are any uh, questions that we don't answer today, uh, please feel free to email um, these like email addresses is listed on the last slide or uh, please get in touch with your SA UK counsellor. So um, the first question that we have is, what are companies that Darby works with for placement? So Eugene, are you able to give us a little bit of information about the companies that you, that business work with? Well, I mean, there are, well, there's hundreds of companies. Um, and obviously, as you know, going on a placement is, uh, is required for many of our undergraduate programs, but placements per se are not required or part of postgraduate programs. Uh, but you can go and apply for internships and placements, and you will get support from the university if you choose to do this. Um, so there are, again, many 
companies that are looking for internships and placements. Um, I mean, literally, there are thousands of positions. Uh, however, they are posted uh, nationally. But we have in the in the middle of you know Derby, in the middle of England, you have a hub of activity which is focused on manufacturing, logistics. So you have big names like Rolls Royce, Toyota, JCB. These are the big multinationals, <clears throat> and then. Alongside these uh, companies, you have a hub of, of all their supply chains. So there's a lot of um, opportunity in working for international businesses connected with manufacturing, logistics, as I said, and retail as well. Um, I mean, again, I wouldn't want to identify specific companies because there are so many and it depends on the, the type of placements and the type of internships you look for. I, I mean, when you come for our international business programs, you obviously come to, you should look to enhance your, your experience. So you should look for placements that actually widen your international experience. So companies that have exposure internationally and they can be, you know, small companies that are only manufacturing space specialist uh, products as part of larger supply chains in the in the region uh, or it could be you know uh, media companies or as i said retail companies looking for marketing positions it depends on exactly what you look for um, but there are a lot of opportunities as i said internships and placements so you can do both actually while you study with us um, you can do short internships. Um, I mean, we, we, these are the, as part of the, the Derby internship program. So these are, you could work for companies for 60 hours to 100 hours while you study. Uh, and you would do a project for a particular company. And the companies will set that out. You know, it'll be something to develop something to, uh, you know, a new website or to push a particular product or it'll be a contained project. Uh, project. But also you can do look for internships that are for a longer period and you can do them during the summer. Uh, or indeed, after you graduate, some will give you the graduate internships as well. I mean, I hope that helps. I mean, what do you think, Anna? Yeah, yeah. And just to follow on from that, in terms of the graduate um, internship programs, the, U the, the UK has just announced a two year post study work visa so that students graduating following next summer will be able to stay in the UK for a period of two years to look or work at any uh, look for work or work at any level. So that's something that as a university, again, we're looking at and um, the um, employment agency will be supporting students to find those kind of work opportunities after university. Um, and then just to follow on with the other subjects, again, there's a there's a wide range of businesses across the UK and internationally that we work with to give students opportunities for work experience and placements. All of our undergraduate programs you can make into a four-year program and do a complete year in industry and then there are some courses like the hospitality and tourism courses for example where you have integrated placements within each year and we work with local companies local businesses um, to give students those opportunities um, and you'll be supported by the college and by the employment agency throughout your time there um, it, 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 you need to find those opportunities. Thank you, Eugene and Anna. So I think what you partially gave the answer to our next question, um, which is what are career opportunities after um, PG courses and will post-study work visa allow students to stay in the UK? Yeah, so the, yeah, the government has announced that from next summer, it will be a two-year period for um, students graduating that you can apply for to stay in the UK. They've also recently announced a three-year post-study work visa for postgraduate research studies. So if you come to the UK to do your PhD, you can then stay in the UK for three years. Mm -hmm. um, and the good thing about these post-study work visas is that you don't have to meet any kind of income thresholds. You can work at any level. So it, we know that it sometimes can take a little bit of time to find kind of that, 
that job that you want to do, but you can stay in the UK and be supported by us to do that. Thank you, Anna. And uh, moving on to the next question. Um, how, how can students who applied from Thailand connect? Is there a way to connect before coming to the UK? Is in connecting with the university? I think I have a feeling that this uh, is more if students can connect between themselves. But if the person who asked this question can clarify, that would be really useful. Yeah. I mean, we have lots of ways you can connect with other students. So once you've made an app application to the university and you know you're coming to us, we have a Facebook group that is specifically for students that are coming in say September 2020 or January 2021. Within that Facebook group, um, there's lots of conversation between international students coming from different places um, where, and you can kind of connect on where you're gonna be living, what courses you're gonna be doing, start to make, question, uh, to make friends and ask questions of people. But we also have something called UniBuddy, which is a new thing that we've started maybe in the last two or three months. Um, and with, within that, you can go online and chat to current students and ask them questions. So if you go onto the website and click at UniBuddy, we have a range of international students and home students on there, but they can give you the real information. So we can tell you what we think it's like to study at the university, but those students can give you the answers um, as to what it's like to be to really be a student. Thank you, Anna. And um, uh, moving on to the next question, uh, which is a bit um, specific. So I, I would encourage the student to, to get in touch directly with you two or um, a counsellor. Uh, are there any master courses available in law and business administration? Yep, so we have the Masters of Business Administration, which you can apply for, and we have the LLM course, um, which is our law programme. Um, all of the information about those is on the website, and they both have um, application points again for September and January. So they are points, but if you want more information or more specific information, yeah, get in touch with us and we can um, give you some more specific information about those programs. Thank you, Anna. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, are there any uh, specific scholarships available for Thai students? Y yeah, so we have a regional high achievers scholarship, which is a 3000 pound scholarship available to Thai students. Um, and then we have a £5,000 scholarship, which is uh, our excellent international student scholarship. We also have um, this year been working with the British Council. So we've offered a great scholarship out to a Thai student um, and that's fully funded for one year. So we're hoping again next year to be working with the British Council because that's been really successful this year. But you have to kind of wait and see. We update our scholarships every year. So the scholarships we have on the website now are valid for January 2021. And then we will change them. They might tweak slightly for uh, September 2021. So the best thing to do is to keep up to date with um, emails from us and with information from our website. And again, there's that £2,000 postgraduate taught scholarship that's available for students. There are no separate applications for the scholarships. So once you've submitted an application, the international admissions team will review that against our scholarship criteria. They'll look at your grades, they'll look at your references and your extracurricular activity. And then once you get made an offer to study with us, then you will get informed whether you have a scholarship or not. So you've got all of that information before you make that decision. Uh, thank you, Anna. So the next question is, how many uh, Thai students are there at Derby? Um, so over all of the years, we've only got kind of about 10 Thai students at the moment. So it's a really good opportunity that's the, the Thai students tell me is to make friends with people from different regions um, and from uh, different countries across the world. Um, you don't want to kind of go to university and just be stuck in a class with lots of people from the same country as you because you don't get that global opportunity. Of, it's, it, experience sharing um, but we are looking to increase our Thai student numbers as well um, so if you've got any uh, applications you want to make or any friends then we're always welcoming Thai students. Thank you Anna and um, so the next question is um, I want to know about IELTS score for MSc medicine. 
Um, so we don't have any medicine courses at the University of Derby, I'm afraid. We have our MSc Biomedical Health, which would be the closest, um, but we don't actually offer medicine. Thank you, Anna. Uh, let me just have a look. So the next question is, um, do you have all courses available for January intake? Um, no, we don't. So primarily for us, January intake was a postgraduate market. Um, so a, a lot of our postgraduate courses have the January intake, as all of the ones we've mentioned today do. Um, we are looking to expand that for January 2021 because of the current climate. We know that um, it's difficult to um, finish qualifications. We know it's difficult to get visas. So for January 2021, we're looking at extending the um, courses that we offer. And we're going to have more undergraduate programs and a few more postgraduate programs. We will be releasing that list in the next couple of weeks. The best thing to do is just hold on. Um, and then we'll release the list of which ones we're going to offer in January. That will be shared with SI UK and they can share that with you. Thank you, Anna. Um, so I, I, it's very kind of like finishing our session. Uh, it, um, I would like to ask you and Eugene if, if you have anything that you would like to add and, and wrap up. Uh, and I would like to thank both of you and all our students uh, who joined today. Um, no, nothing more to add, just to say thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you found it interesting. Um, we hope you've, we've given you something to um, think about with Derby and, and gain more information. If you want more information, obviously everything's on the screen there. Um, and thank you, Eugene. Have you yeah, got anything no, to add? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I was glad to, to talk to you about the programs. But yes, I, I look forward to seeing some of you here. Yes, look forward to meeting you one day in Derby. <laughs> Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.